Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing off 12 advanced tips and tricks that I really only see pros use. Now, as per usual in these videos, these techniques will not be limited to one aspect of your gameplay. That means they're going to include everything from 200 IQ launchpad tricks, to useful box fighting strategies, to yes, even a secret way to always get high ground. It is busted. Oh, additionally, the format will be the exact same. I'll show what the trick is, how to do it, why it works, and then an in-game example from your favorite pro player. So make sure to drop a like and without further ado, let's get right on into it. Starting off, we have probably the most overpowered yet underutilized trick in the entire game. So what this trick is, is pre-edit. There's actually a setting for this, which I think I recommended you guys turn off. It's on the second page, the game settings. It's called disable pre-edit option right here. I actually have it on, which means pre-edits are disabled, but in order for it to work, you need to turn it off. And basically what this does is before you actually build a wall, a ramp, a cone, anything, you can actually pre-edit it. You see, that's where the name comes from. <laughs> so what a lot of pros including Martos does. That was the godly clip you just saw. What Martos will do is instead of going for a normal wall replace, Martos will either do a wide edit on top like this. Sometimes you'll see him do a wide edit to the right like that. He'll basically pre-edit his wall so he can get a shot off right away. And you can see if I get this wall down, I have a free shot right off the bat. You could even kick it up a notch and as you put down the pre-edited wall, you could establish peace control at the same time time put a little cone in there this <laughs> No, 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 this man would have nowhere to go. He would basically be dead Yep, don't even try from your opponent's POV They're gonna be inside their box holding their wall and all they're gonna be waiting for is for the little edit sign To go away. They're gonna be waiting for this any decent player knows. Oh, he took my wall. I'll put a cone Oh that's not my wall either. But they would just run out of the box because they know they lost the wall. With pre-edits, there's gonna be nothing there. They're gonna be holding like this, and there's just nothing they can do. It's so broken. Now, me and Kazaki, I think we've showed this before in the past, but what a lot of people don't realize is that pre-edits are even better in team game modes. Like, they're good in solos, but they are way better in trios and duos. All you have to do is have one person on your team with the pre-edit option turned off. Again, here it is, disable pre-edits. All a bunch of pro teams do is they'll run up to a wall, have one person spray it out with a cone, the other person just holds, obviously the person with the best ping. And look at this! Imagine a full team in here. They have absolutely nowhere to go. You could have another dude place a cone, you could have another dude with a harpoon. There's so many different options you have. All because you're abusing the heck out of pre-edits, the most broken thing in the entire game. So to prove to you guys how well it works, I'm gonna show some gameplay of different pro teams using them. I remember 4ZR and Tayson's trio was really good at it. I'm pretty sure they used it in FNCS Heat. And then to prove it even more, my own trio used it in the test event. It was basically the reason we won the game, because we killed the dude with the railgun. And I'm telling you guys, if you're playing a team game mode, just have one person turn pre-edits back on, aka disable pre-edits off. It is the best way to kill people better than you. It's just so broken. Trick numero two, again from FaZe Martas, my daddy, is a box fighting strategy that will almost always catch your opponents off guard. The best way to utilize this trick is when you're on top of someone's box, you're box fighting. By now, I've taught you so many different ways to go about this situation. You can fake smack, pull out your pickaxe, all that good stuff. This angle is just so weird because even if you do replace like this and you put a cone, oh, Kazaki's just a god. But if you put a cone, half the time he's gonna face through like that, the other half he's actually gonna end up under the cone. That happens to me so much, where the guy's under the cone and then he edits out. Then even if you do what I do, which is I'll usually put a ramp in, what happens more often though is if they're positioned at the front of the box, so like over there, and you put the ramp down, they're not gonna end up under it. Oh god. They're gonna end up with this god low ground peak. Uh, Kazaki? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So what FaZe Martos does is he will actually rotate his ramp twice. He will take it knowing the guy is trying to do that little outplay at the front of the box. Put a ramp in like that. Even Kazaki tried to pre-fire it. He could not. And then you have this sweet angle. So full speed, you know, you're box fighting this dude, doing little mind games. You see him, you know he's going for that shot. So you're gonna rotate it twice. Then you replace, put that... 
Oh, what the? Oh, I never knew that. If you don't have free edits on and you rotate it twice, then you go back and pull out the ramp, it's not re-rotated. So you will need free edits turned on for this. Here's your opponent's POV. They do the little Tifu. Oh, I'm gonna jump up. Nope, you hit your dogged. <laughs> your skull gets crushed by the ramp. As always, I'm gonna show a Martos clip for it. Remember, you need pre-edits turned on, aka disable pre-edits turned off, or else when you go to pull out your ramp again, it's not gonna be rotated, so keep that in mind. Martos, he's just so good at this trick, so go master it, go try it, it's really fun. Moving on, our next few strategies, there's like three of them, they will all revolve around the launch pad. By now, most of you guys should know the famous Martas trick. It's the one where if you're basically one box away from the person, or rather two, and you low launch while inside your box, they're gonna be going for this right hand peek like that. You can just fly in and 200 pump them. The first of these kind of new launchpad tricks, I'll show the Martos one first because it's similar to the one I just showed. And how it works is again, you're going to be low launching out of your own box. So what that means is you need a ramp over your head. You can do the same edit like this, but instead of trying to go into a box over here, which by the way, only works if you have a floor on top of you. Otherwise, you're going to do the trick I'm about to show. But how it works is you just low launch. You're just going to end up going behind onto the top of your own box, like this. So say Mr. Kazaki is on top trying to replace either my cone, my floor. Just wait for the right moment, throw a ramp over your head, do that same edit, make sure you're kind of centered on the launch pad. Boom, you go right on, full piece, dead. <laughs> Gosh. Part of why this trick is so busted and the next ones will be even more broken with the launch pad is that from this distance, there's really no audio and you have no time to react. <laughs> you can basically do it so well where there's almost no gliding animation. Look at that. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot to include an example or like me saying to show an example. So I'm just gonna show one now. Martos has done this trick so many times and it's so clean. Nobody really expects this, especially because why the heck would you just fly out of your own box out of nowhere? But yeah, that is one launchpad strat. Let's move on to the other two. You know how we were just talking about audio, that audio right there. The only reason launchpads are not as overpowered as you might think they are is because you hear the gliding animation, you hear it going off, and you kind of know someone is launch padding either near you, on top of you, but with this trick, this really broken strat that pros have actually been hiding, you could literally take height and launch pad on people without them hearing. The key for this strat to work is you need your opponent to be 9 layers above you, or between 32 to 37 meters. Let's say we're in a scrim, this man is on high ground, or even if he's just on natural high ground. 35 meters, that's when I know the trick is gonna work, and all I'm gonna do is just launch pad up. Look, look at that! There was basically no gliding animation. Ping it, 34. I'm right under. <laughs> Imagine you're on high ground in a scrim and that happens, like... <laughs> I'd kill myself. In game, in game. No, in real life. I'd... You're shooting someone from height, everyone's spraying. <laughs> There would just be no time for you to react. It's so broken. And like I always say, I prove it. So what I'm going to show is an FNCS highlight, I believe from EU. I saw it in a somebody's gun video, but a team, they literally pinged it. They saw they were probably 36 meters down from high ground. They landed on height and they killed the high ground team. It was so beautiful. Oh, and actually, I did this on my stream when I was playing with Polarized and Chimp, two pros. We were playing Night Scrims and we literally just decided to go for it. The only bad part was we happened to do it on another pro team. It was Frist and Joji and they may have killed us even though we wiped one of them right away. Don't ask me how or why, just know the strat works. As for the final launch pad trick, the third and probably the most practical because you can use it a lot. All you need to do is build a wall a ramp off the wall, and then a floor like that. And what will happen is when you launch pad, you don't even pull out a glider, you jump down off height, and you take no fall damage. And you can do this so quickly. Like say you just got out of a build fight, you're on high ground, you're so high up, and you might be getting chopped. Just do this, Hoop, jump over, boom. And now you're on the ground. Took no freaking damage at all. You could even do it if you see your opponent. 
Oh, I missed. Trick number six I believe we're on now is a really useful and simple way to get way better loot. So as you guys can see, I am currently in an arena game, a private match that is, and I do not have the best loot. We got a white AR, a green lever, not a ton of ammo either. What people don't realize is that these sideways, you know, the little weird purple rifts, they are ridiculously good for getting you god loot. And yes, these are still in arena. You just need to go near them and they will pull you in. Look at that, P90. Let me take that. Oh, I want to open the other sideways chest before it runs out. Uh, you gotta kind of kill the zombies to make it last longer. Let me open it! Two ARs, some minis. Nice. I think there's only one or two sideways chests. No. But look at my ammo now. I have 260. I got a purple SMG. I'll show actually a video from one of my streams. I know I'm talking about my streams a lot, but you boys have been grinding. You guys should all go follow me. Where in the middle of FNCS, I went into one of the sideways just to see how broken it was. And I came out with a purple spaz, like 300 extra ammo. It was so insanely good. Even though they kind of look scary and stupid and like they don't belong in competitive, they are ridiculously good and nobody really knows about it. So yeah, go tell your friends. More than halfway through, let me show you two of the most fun tricks in Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 8. Both of the next two tricks revolve around the Kevin Cubes. The first one is not the rotation I showed. That rotation trick is you basically go into the slipstream, and then once you get out of it, you keep going upwards, then you get the glider effect, and you can go pretty darn far. I actually was not really going anywhere because I needed to stay close to the other Kevin Cubes. The trick that I really, really like and that I've used in game to actually get a kill, it's so much fun, is you take a Kevin Cube, you hit off one of these bouncers, these mother truckers, and you essentially do the same exact thing. You go really high up. However, instead of just waiting to go high enough where you can pull your glider and rotate, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for someone. Like say someone at Lazy, just anyone in this general area. You're gonna exit and you can literally jump right on top of them and you take no fall damage. You take no fall damage at all. If I were to just go straight up and then get out of it, I would actually take fall damage. But as you saw I did in this clip, in an actual arena match, I think there was only one person left, it was arena fills. I did exactly what I showed, I jumped off the alien bouncer while I was invisible, I found the last guy, and I jumped right on his head. My boy had no idea where I was, it was basically like I was falling from the sky. And I killed him while playing with the one and only Young Calculator. So if you ever really want to just surprise the crap out of someone, all you gotta do is just keep looking down see where they are imagine the dude right here boom full piece box like fish one pump going for the clip and he's dead let's go the other very fun kind of Kevin Cube trick, in this case, I'm just using a Shadow Flopper because I could not find a launch pad. It is the best and fastest way to rotate in the entire game. All you need is, like I said, a launch pad and either a Kevin Cube or a Cube Flopper, Shadow Flopper. You're gonna eat it, you're gonna go invisible, and then you're gonna jump right onto the launch pad. And it is going to send you insanely high up. Right at the top, that is where you want to spam. Like I showed before, right click. You're going to keep spamming, looking straight up, slash forward, whichever direction you want to go. Just like the slipstream, when you get out, you are able to pull your glider. And just look at this. It was basically like I jumped off the battle bus. Here it comes, over 1,000 meters. That is just ridiculous. On to trick number nine, I'm gonna teach you guys how to abuse crosshair placement like the pros do. This is going to be kind of a short trick because it's really simple and it basically, like I said, revolves around your crosshair. In the past, I've showed that your crosshair can be really useful, like if you look above a wall, you can put a cone there. If you look below a wall, you can also put a cone on the other side of a wall. But what I kind of haven't shown is the other side of it, which is that if you just look on a ramp, you could 
could put your own cone above you like that. So say I'm bloom battling someone, right? They're above me like this. What I see a lot of people do, which is bad, is they will panic and try to put a cone, you know, above them. And they'll accidentally put it here. And then they'll be like, oh, crap. Ah, why didn't that place? It didn't place because your crosshair placement is some ass. What I've been doing so much recently is I will literally bloom battle the crap out of height. I'll just look like that. And boom, I am protected. AR spray, AR spray. Look right at the ramp when they go to shoot back, and boom. I can just turbo build. This is also why you might see some certain pros if someone is on their wall, or if they actually got the wall rather, and they have a cone up, and they're doing their best to make sure the guy does not replace it. What they'll do is they'll actually look up at their floor sometimes before they can actually edit out. They're not doing what most people would, which is looking straight ahead. That kind of makes sense intuitively because you wanna look at your opponent, but what actually happens because of your crosshair placement is if they break the ramp and you go to replace it, it, you're gonna end up building a ramp out there and missing. Look at my crosshair. It's not on the wall. It's gonna place outside of it, but the minute I put the crosshair on the wall, even while it's edited, that's when it places where I want it to, like that. And that's, again, why you see some pros either look straight up or straight down to make sure that the ramp places in their own box. What an awesome game. Kind of random, but our next trick is how to stop yourself from getting stuck in the shakedown animation. I'm literally in a trio arena fill game just to show you guys how the heck this works. Um, my teammates are not happy. Let me, uh, do it. So I'm gonna shake, and if I press the same button, look at that, it stops. Shakedown, whatever key it is. Oh. Well, I guess there's a certain point, the point of no return. But yeah, that is basically how to cancel shakedowns. I definitely did not die. All you do, like I showed, press whatever your shakedown key is. Mine is mouse wheel up, yours might be E. You press that to shake, you can press it again to stop shaking. And that's all you do, it is very simple. The more you know. Second to last trick is something that, when mastered, will help you win a lot more fights. This strategy is really simple, but I feel like not enough people actually utilize it. Basically, it's kind of forcing yourself to actually phase through different builds. I'm pretty sure in DJ's case, the ramp was like this, which is kind of why he knew he could phase through the actual floor. And even if he kept building, he knew he could just sit here and his opponent would basically freak out. This is pretty accurate and what you'll see a lot from people who, oh, okay. But that's what happens even when kind of good players don't realize that someone's phasing through builds. The way Martos uses this a lot is he will basically run into a fight and he'll build a ramp over his head connecting to the wall, then instantly flip it so he phases through for a shot. That one's probably the simplest case. Everyone knows you could phase a ramp like this. My favorite use case of this is if someone is low, I know I'm gonna jump in their box, exploit in like this. What I will do is instead of trying to replace with my own ramp and then edit it, which is a good, I mean, it's not bad. What I will do is I will make sure I'm kind of on the outskirts of the box. That way, when I place a cone, I phase through it like this. My opponent is jumping up, trying to build a ramp, do anything, but they can't because I'm purposely phasing through this cone. Or you're kind of at the center of it like this. Use phasing, it is broken, and Mr. Kazaki agrees. Yes, follow me on Twitter, at Kazaki underscore. Thank you. I can't, I, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Guys, I'm not gonna lie, the last trick was going to be how to queue up for Arena Phil, but Epic just took it out of the game. I woke up and it's gone in the new update. <laughs> Hopefully it comes back soon, but yeah, it's gone for now. Use Gojarian instead. Overall, guys, those are all 12 tips and tricks. Let me know which was your favorite down below. On top of that, if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone in the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. Remember, boys, I say it at the end of every video. I stream on the same day I upload, so pretty much every other day. Go check out my stream at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, that is it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.